In this film, we are looking at five young men who grew up in Suffolk and who have all left to go to university in the past three years. All the young men seen in the film have been faced with worries and anxiety to some degree or other about leaving home for the first time. They tell us what this experience was like for them, how they were affected, and how they coped when hit by the realisation of not living at home anymore. Today I'm going off to university. I'm going to Brighton, the University of Sussex. I would describe myself as determined, I guess. I know where I want to go and I know that I'm going to get there at some point. I don't know how I'm going to get there yet, but I'll figure something out along the way. We're at home today and we're packing the car up and taking Dan, my eldest son, off to university in Brighton. I'm excited and sad and emotional and trying to hold it together. <laughs> I think he's in for quite a shock. I remember when I, the first time I left home, it's very exciting and you're really looking forward to it and then the sudden implications of being alone. It's quite a shock to the system and until you experience it, I don't think you can understand it. Mentally getting myself ready has not been too bad. I know when I get there, it's gonna be a bit more difficult, but at the moment, I'm all right, I'm excited. It's a, a lot of new things, it's a new place. I don't know anyone there at all. And then obviously you're going straight into physics, it's quite an intense subject. Most looking forward to sort of meeting new people, I guess. Trying out new things. Making friends, that's it. From when they're born to when they're about three year old, you know everything that they do. And then gradually over the years, you lose a little bit of that connection. And then suddenly today is gonna to be the last day that I pretty much know anything that's going on in his life. I think about leaving my family behind is I'm not really leaving them because I'm coming back in the holidays anyway, so I don't think it really counts, despite what mum will say. <laughs> I imagine he's very excited and now he's probably just glad that I'm gone. Stop fussing around him and giving him advice and guidance. <laughs> Genuinely? Probably I don't expect to hear from him unless I prompted him. I said to him, he can ask me anything. If you do. I want to know all the good stuff, but I want to know the bad stuff as well. So, we'll see. <laughs> Bit sad, <laughs> but excited for him. <laughs> I would describe myself as sometimes lazy, sometimes really productive. I like to stay busy all the time, like seven days a week. I'd say I was optimistic, which often leads to making silly mistakes. Positive, fairly outgoing. Mm, I'm pretty relaxed most of the time. I don't doesn't take I don't get stressed very easily or angry. When I first heard I got a place at Ravensbourne, I was really excited because I was moving down with a bunch of different friends who all came to the same college, moving down into a, a new flat, it was a new place to be. It was really good because a lot of students move out without knowing people, but I moved out with people. I didn't get that really nervous factor of like, oh, I don't know anyone, literally no one. Because without them, I reckon I would have left pretty quick. Ash, I noticed he was very down in like the first couple of months and spent a lot of time in his room kind of just alone and I, I think that was because he was missing home and mum. I was very very nervous like on the outside I tried I tried to like make myself look really happy really excited but then without anyone seeing me I, in my head I was like oh no 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 everything was gone all my practices all my everything so it's really hard to adjust to the new lifestyle a student has gained such a culture change and you kind of don't realize it at the time but like your entire mindset and like your opinions on life and everything they very kind of shift slightly and then when money came into my bank from student finance i splashed that in like a week so i had to get a job pretty quick which then meant me missing university for a while like i say a while i mean like half a year so i lived with ashley for two years and I think at one point we both felt like we should we were quite lonely and we should be at home. So we, we did talk about that and saying, oh, we should maybe, do we carry on with this course? Do we quit? What's, we could be at, back at home. There was points where I did feel quite lonely on my own because obviously there was a massive flat and there was just points where nobody was in. I always think to myself, you can't quit now because 
you've started it, you've got to go through with it. I noticed Dom uh, enjoyed his home life quite a lot and carried that through onto university where he'd have the same routine. I think that was maybe a way of coping with moving out and moving away from the family. Just after the first term of Christmas, I got a little bit ill and that's where it sort of hit me. It's a bit more serious. So I had to, I was going home quite a lot for quite a few weekends. It was the beginning of this year, wasn't it? Sort of January, February time, he wasn't well. And also I think the accommodation where they had six fellas living together had actually hit rock bottom. I think it was a bit of a mess. So he wasn't looking forward to going back. Coming backwards and forwards so often, not staying in one place, it made me feel a lot more homesick and a bit more anxious about where I was going to go in the next few years and if I could survive living by myself. I think they know I do struggle a little bit, but we never really talk directly about it. I would say I had a couple of stumbles. One of them was kind of the first time I'd felt I'd failed at something. I'd felt I'd let myself down. I really struggled with that actually and found it quite hard. I didn't really look for help because I just it's just one of those things you feel, particularly as a guy, it's quite hard to own up and be like, oh, I'd like some support here. I didn't tell my mum what was going on at all. She still doesn't know. So I felt like, I don't know, I just don't like getting support from people because I feel weak. I don't, I feel embarrassed in a way. Unfortunately, we do live in a culture where men don't talk about their feelings as much as women do. This becomes really negative because then men feel that if they're having emotions or they're having reactions to situations that it's abnormal in some way, but it's absolutely not abnormal. If you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed, a lot of people, particularly young men, will not want to talk about it. They'll want to hide away. What I would say is don't self-isolate, don't hide away. Instead, kind of try and get out and talk to somebody as best you can because there can be a barrier, a stigma, particularly for men, around talking about how they feel. Actually, once you come through the other side of that and you challenge that barrier, you can feel understood, you can feel you aren't being judged, you can actually build some real resilience in yourself. There's support here, and I just, I wish that more men would talk to each other about their emotions so that there wasn't this culture of it not being okay to talk. There's always support at hand, and, um, you know, we're here to help. I think the flatmates, as in the other boys, helped each other a lot by, we had quite a lot of banter, but if they weren't there, I would have just sat in bed all day, every day, and I would have just felt myself getting lower and lower and lower. I'm not being affected by it anymore, I don't, not that I can see it in a way, I feel happier now. And I found myself being a lot more productive because I didn't want to feel lonely again. One thing that we tend to pick up on in students is isolation. It's very, very common that people start to take themselves away from, from socialising or from their course. I think the most important thing is to recognise how much courage it takes to do it. It's a really brave thing to speak openly and honestly about how you feel. And if you can do that, then you'll be on the right path to getting the support you need. As far as I can tell, Dan's been having a great time at university so far. He hasn't at any point said that he's had a tough time or been struggling, but maybe they don't always tell their mums what's been going on. First few hours, I just kind of chilled out a bit, I guess. I didn't, I didn't do anything, I didn't feel like it was real. There were some times when I felt kind of stranded, and I felt like every day there was things to do and I didn't have much downtime. When Dan went away, I was aware of the fact that there are a lot of challenges for people, young people who leave home for the first time. And I had discussed with Dan that it was okay to have emotional challenges and that he should talk to people, he could talk to me. But he promised me that he would talk and he hasn't. So I'm hoping he's okay or he's found someone else to speak to if he needs to. I saw my girlfriend for uh, one night, probably a couple of weeks after I got here. I talked to her about my problems. I kind of allude to my problems with my, my mum and my brother. I actually talk to her about them. She helps me get through them. Just having a conversation, thinking about home, kind of made things better. The first week of lectures, I felt incredibly stressed. I felt like there was a lot to do every single day and I didn't know how I was going to do it, which it, it made me feel down and then that made me even less likely to do the things I needed to do. 
I don't know if he would have thought about his mental health in the first few weeks. He may be very more aware of the impact. It can become quite overwhelming. Hopefully he is aware of those feelings, if he had them, and was willing or able to talk to somebody about it. There's mental health centre, it's where you can go and you can talk to people about your problems if you're struggling emotionally or mentally. But we also have an academic advisor who's an expert in our subject, but we can also talk to you about personal problems or, or anything like that. At the moment, I think things are going well. I don't feel as stressed anymore. I think the main problem I had starting out was not being prepared, but now I'm here and I am a bit more prepared and I'm less stressed, I'm less down. The main thing is to not try and internalise your problems. If you talk about how you're feeling, then you can start to understand it better, and then when you understand it, you can take steps to solve the problems. I would say to the young men who's going to uni, speak up, but I regret that so much, not speaking up. Us being blokes, we have to be all like hard and manly about things, but just let it out. When you're in university or a place like this, you're surrounded by people that care. Student services are, are there to help. No matter which university you go to, there will be a student service. Go online at your university and log in with student services and see what's available. There are lots of people around who are willing to listen to you and I think that's what's most important is just being able to offload, to get it out loud, to, to say the words gives you an awful lot of power in terms of being able to overcome the difficulties that you're having. And often there's a, there's a judgment on the self of I'm being a coward by speaking or I'm, or I'm not, or I'm weak by talking. And my honest belief is that it's the complete opposite of that. If you can find the courage to actually come forward and talk about how you're feeling and be honest about that, then to me that shows a huge amount of courage. So I just want to encourage people to take that brave step and talk.